As MBA Center students know, the GMAT loves to test obscure number properties – factors, multiples, remainders, primes, evens, odds, signs, square and root identities, and the like should be so familiar to you that you don't even blink when you take the GMAT. However, equally important is a good grasp of the semantics and a thorough understanding of the assignment, especially on a data sufficiency question. Here, the problem asks us whether integer x could be written as the product of two and only two different positive prime numbers. Say, for example, 3 times 5, 2 times 7. Now, pay close attention. This question does not give us this information as a property of x from whence we are to find its value. The question asks us whether, given that x has such and such a value, will that number that has this property have that property that's mentioned. Now, let's enumerate statement 1. Statement 1 tells us that x is less than 8. We know that x is a positive integer, so given that we are restricted only to those positive integers below 8, we would do well to simply list out all the possible values for x. Then, we test these values one by one to see whether any of them could be written as the product of two distinct primes. 1 cannot. 2 cannot. 3 cannot, 4 cannot, and 5 cannot. What about 6? Six? 6 is 2 times 3, so yes. What about 7? No. So, we have several possible values of x that would answer the question in the negative. No, we cannot. However, we also have a possible value of x, 6, that answers the question in the affirmative. Not knowing whether the answer is yes or no, we are forced to conclude that statement 1 is not sufficient to answer the question. Now then, let's get back to the problem so that we can look at statement 2. Statement 2 tells us that x is a multiple of 3. That means that x, as a positive integer, might be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, or so on. So, let's have a look. How about 3? No. 6? Well, it's 2 times 3, so yes. What about 9? No. 12? No. 15? Well, it's 3 times 5, so yes. We don't need to go further. Once again, we have possible values of x for which the answer would be yes, and possible values of x for which the answer would be no. So, statement 2 is not sufficient to answer the question. But what about statements 1 and 2 combined? Well, the only multiples of 3 below 8 are 3 and 6. If x is 3, then the answer to the question is no. If x is 6, then the answer to the question is yes. But we don't know which x is, 3 or 6. Thus, even combined, the statements are still not sufficient to answer the question. Now, many students pick C because in their minds they have a hard time not thinking, well, 6 is the only one that meets the criterion, so X must be 6. C it is. This is wrong-headed thinking. Remember, our goal is to determine whether X meets this criterion, not given this criterion, what is the value of X.